Hi everyone. Um, I need to give an uh, introduction for the uh, Open CPU system, uh, which I've been developing for the past uh, four years or so. First question is always, what is Open CPU? Uh, Open CPU system exposes an HTTP API for scientific computing to build scalable analysis and visualization modules for use in systems, pipelines, and web application. Uh, two questions always come to mind. First one is, what does that mean? Uh, and this, the second question is always, don't we have Shiny for that? Yeah. Um, and I hope to convince you today that OpenCPU really is something very different and it, it fits a very different purpose. Um, so let's just start with a very simple example. Uh, here is a uh, simple um, curl line. If you're familiar with curl, it's a simple HTTP client. And what we're doing is we're calling the R norm function from this task package in R, um, which we're doing with the, um, the first line. And you can copy paste this in your console to prove that this actually works. Um, and this um, URL slash OPCPU, which is the root, um, the root API, uh, the root tier for the API, the library is the main library with R packages, stat slash stats in the case of R package, slash R is the R name space within the R package, the slash R norm is our function, and then with slash JSON, we ask for the output in JSON. Uh, and then we post this JSON payload, which is the, um, uh, the function called arguments, in this case the end, the mean, and the standard deviation. And if we run this in the console, um, we will get uh, it will, the system will call with will call our norm our norm function um, with these uh, parameters as arguments uh, and then return of JSON. So it, it basically just follows the steps from the second block. Uh, it simply converts JSON um, into uh, into an R list, uh, then calls the R norm function with these parameters and then converts the output back to JSON, which in this simple example is equivalent to the uh, to the call uh, in the bottom. But what I want you to know here is that in the first block, there's no R. This is, the idea here is to have a completely interoperable API. Uh, and this sort of comes from my experiences work with consulting, where you often work with web developers or with people that are supposed to uh, integrate your, um, your functions, your, your, your data processing, your visualization into their systems, into their stacks, but they don't speak R, they don't wanna, they don't wanna uh, learn all the intricacies of R, um, and they just want to have a clean API that, can, that they can call. And that is sort of the premise of OpenCPU. So what OpenCPU does is it's simply, it's an interoperable HTTP API for data analysis. It focuses on remote procedure calls, uh, remote, which include remote function calls and remote script executions and object management. Um, for data interchange, uh, several data interchange formats are supported, including JSON, protocol buffers, CSV, some other stuff. Um, everything naturally supports parallel uh, requests, asynchronous requests. Um, it's highly configurable. Everything is uh, naturally re reproducible. I will show this later, by the way. Um, and there's, we started to develop client libraries. Uh, at first we developed a client library for JavaScript. Other people are working on a Ruby library and there are some other uh, less mature libraries. Um, to emphasize what OpenCPU is not, if we want to cont contrast it with some other technology out there, there's no predefined widgets in OpenCPU. There's no special programming paradigms. The API itself, even, uh, it, it's not really limited to R, it's, it's, a, it's a generic, uh, API definition that could work for Python, for Julia, for, for all sorts of uh, scientific computing which has a, a functional style. Uh, and there's no need for the client to manage processes, users, code evaluation, all of that stuff. So just to see, to demo what you can do with this. Um, so, so the system is very flexible and you can use it for many purposes, but one purpose is building web applications. So just to show some example applications, uh, this is an example that I like. Um, it's very simple. It pulls from data, from some uh, stock data from Yahoo Finance, and then uh, makes a plot. And 
all of this um, is very configurable. Um, the front end here, I mean, that's just programmed in JavaScript. Uh, so the idea of OpenCPU is um, you do need uh, uh, coding knowledge. You use JavaScript or PHP or whatever framework that you and your team are comfortable with to develop your applications. Uh, I'm not solving that problem for you. I just give you a very clean, simple API to call your R stuff and to integrate it into your stacks. And, and with that, you can, um, you can build applications that go a little bit beyond the standard, uh, uh, the standard widgets and sliders that, that fit the, uh, the R paradigm. Uh, for example, this is an interactive markdown editor. If you uh, update markdown code here, code here, it will automatically evaluate and show the output, right? And um, you can just um, let your creativity go wild. So just um, to dissect a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, under the hood, what's happening here? So here's a, a very simple curl line, which is basic, which is actually um, uh, uh, what's happening under the hood uh, behind the Spox application that I just showed. So um, we're calling the smooth function, which I defined in the Spox package, um, and in this case we're passing two arguments: it's called ticker, and one is one is a date. And uh, one is called from, which is, show this. So if you open the URL in your browser, you actually get to see the function that you're calling, which is, you know, if you use HTTPS, you get to see the function. If you, if you use HTPost, you always invoke a remote function call. Right, so what we're doing here is we're doing a post to this uh, particular function, a curl post uh, the standard headers. And what we get back is a, a, if the function call is successful, is an HTTP 201, which will uh, give us the location of the output in, uh, uh, on the spur. So um, and that's uh, uh, something I will go into in the next slide. But so for every remote procedure call, um, you get a, a unique key that then contains all of the contents of this remote procedure call. Um, I'll show you next. Um, some other things, uh, we use cache control. Um, so I set the cache control to five minutes. So what that does is basically, if all of you at the same time call this R function right now, um, my server wouldn't have any problem with that because the thing that's only executed once and the server is smart enough to um, figure out that this result is cacheable, um, so uh, all of the subsequent requests within these five minutes, they just get served the, um, the, the cached result. Um, and then there's some other headers, um, mostly for debugging. Oh, and the access control allow origin, that's of course, so uh, I'll show it. So. Um, just to emphasize a little bit about uh, what's, what's one of the major differences between open CPU and um, many of the other R web frameworks that are out there, uh, state is managed very different than OpenCPU. So in OpenCPU, each request is stateless, which is, I mean, it's HTTP, so everything is stateless, um, and therefore the server does not have a single permanent R process for, um, for each of your uh, requests. So you can, um, that way you can make much more efficient use of your server resources, because you don't have to keep all of these R processes alive for all of these R users that are currently there that might not be doing anything but they're just idle. Um, so, but we still want to have sort of stateful, um, build stateful applications. So how do we do that? Um, and OpenCPU uses an approach which I call functional state, which is a little abusing the terminology because functional programming doesn't have state by design. But the idea is that in functional programming languages, um, so, uh, every function call depends only, the output depends only on the input. So um, there's no side effects uh, of the function call. So in, APC, in OPCPU, we assume this model. So we assume that each request, each function that you call, um, there's not, there's not going to be any side effects because the way this is implemented is there's an R process that's forked, it performs your function call and it immediately kills off the R process. 
and you only get the output of your function call. Um, and um, OPC view, as I, as I showed in the previous slide, for each uh, remote procedure call, for each remote function call, it returns a unique key that you can use to, uh, to retrieve or reuse the stored object. So for example, you can um, do a function call that returns a data frame, and then in subsequent requests, you can use HTTP-GET to retrieve that data frame. You can retrieve it in JSON, in CSV, in, in protocol buffers, um, but you can also use this key to reuse this object as an argument in subsequent function calls. So thereby you get, uh, you get you can implement state. You can implement a series of function calls where each uh, uh, function call uses uh, the return object from other function calls uh, as an argument in new function calls. Um, and that's really nice. Um, so thereby you can you can uh, everything na uh, becomes natively parallel because you can you can uh, fire up like five six HTTP requests at the same time, get all of their output keys, and feed them to uh, a new uh, another function call in a in a, in a uh, new request. So what about privacy? Oh, OPC view doesn't have any notion of users, but uh, there's no authentication. Um, which you, you can add it, but uh, it's not required. But the idea is that each of these keys is secret. So, um, uh, and that's how you, how you get privacy. So you perform a function call, you get this key back, which, which references to the, to the stored output of this uh, function call on the server, um, but this key is only known to you. Other people um, uh, don't know this key by default. So that's how we uh, obtain privacy. But you are free to share and publish these keys through whatever like application on top of that. Um, this key simply represents this, this object on the server, and uh, you can you can print it up, you can use it in subsequent function calls. But you can also uh, share this key with a friend, uh, and then he can retrieve it or he can uh, use it in subsequent function calls. Uh, and another feature of Opus CPU is that all of these objects that are stored on the server under, under the key are reproducible by design. So apart from storing the actual object, we also store um, the function call that was used to store that object. So if somebody shares a key with you or a URL of a particular object on the server, you can reuse it, you can retrieve it, but you can also, uh, uh, by design, look into how was this object created. So this is sort of the foundational, what I hope will be uh, a social approach to data analysis. And um, yeah, so it's an interoperable API on HTTP, um, thereby you can very easily create clients for various languages. Uh, this is just some simple code from the JavaScript client that I had together uh, and to prove this actually works. Show this JS fiddle. So everyone knows you can cheat with JS Fiddle. And this is exactly what we saw a second ago in the application, but now through JS Fiddle, it uses JS Fiddle. It uses uh, the cross, uh, the cross origin resource sharing. It's very simple, it's here to code, I'm sure you can, sure you can read it, it's a little small. But um, it, it, it's simply, in JavaScript, you ask for an RPC, you do an RPC request. The function actually returns the, the jQuery the, the the Ajax object so you can manipulate that, you can do whatever you would do with a regular jQuery Ajax request, uh, and you can you can build on top of that. Actually, uh, oh, OpenCPU so works very nicely together with uh, our Studio server. You need to install your own server for that, um, but. And on my server, I have, uh, it's public at opcpu.org uh, slash rstudio is my, uh, is the rstudio. Um, and on the slash ocpu is the opcpu API. And I'm not sure how much time do I have? Yeah. All right, let me, let me show a very quick demo of, of uh, how this would work. Let me read this a little bit. So. For example, uh, I will create a new package, um, and it's still very easy with RStudio, of course. And I call it uh, 
I call this my package. And then in my package, I define a function. And I'm going to keep it very simple now. I'm going to return the uh, square root of, um, of the input. I install the package on the server. And now it automatically becomes available under uh, the API. So uh, because I'm, uh, in our studio, I'm logged in under my name. So therefore, uh, this particular, my personal home library is available under slash user uh, slash uh, your own slash library. Uh, these are the packages that I have installed in my personal, just my standard personal home R library on the server. Um, so then this is my package. This is of its under R. And this is my function, and then if I want to call the function, um, This is, uh, if you call it without any uh, post fix, you get back this key that I talked about earlier. Now we can retrieve the output here under uh, slash r slash l. But as a shortcut, if you add slash json, you get the return object directly returned in json format. So this is the, this is the square root of 10. And uh, this is a very simple example, but you can imagine how you can, this, you can use our packages to uh, remotely start calling your R functions. And the system will make everything available uh, through JSON, through protocol buffers, uh, over HTTP. OpenCPU, every OpenCPU installation comes with a little testing page. It's just a GUI to a HTTP client. It's very easy, very convenient. Uh, open that one right now. I'm going to skip over this, um, mostly, but um, just some of the motivation. So if you compare this to language bridges, so currently most sort of sophisticated R applications are built with language bridges, like R-side, R2, R JRI, and they, they connect R into a, um, into a general purpose uh, programming environment. So what is the benefit of using open CPU? Um, uh, rather than such a direct language bridge. Um, and it's, 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 it's mostly the idea of separation of concerns. So you have this, in, 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 uh, this is an example from the R server manual, and it seems very simple. In Java, you start a new R connection, and then you push a code to evaluate, and you convert it to, to levels. But if you, if you look closely, it becomes clear that this is, the R client is going to need a lot of knowledge about uh, the clients can need a lot, lot of knowledge about our internals to, to work with this. Um, it's going to have to understand how to manage our processes. It's going to have to somehow generate and push our syntax. How is it going to do that? And then, you know, in this case, you get doubles back, so you as doubles. But what if you get data frame? Then everything becomes very uh, tricky on, on, on the client side. Um, and there's limited exception handling. There's no concurrency. So you get this, this high coupling in your application, which is a bit painful. Um, so, the big benefit of OpenCPU is that it layers on HTTP, and HTTP is such a beautiful protocol. It's very mature, very flexible, it's interoperable, it's distributed, it's got native exception handling with the status codes. Uh, you get caching, encryption, application, everything comes there by design. So, uh, by layering on HTTP rather than directly connecting uh, these uh, uh, two languages, you, you naturally get a lot of benefits. Um, as we saw in the previous talk, what can happen if you don't? Um, so uh, it's 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 really nice to to take advantage of, of an actual application protocol that made. And, and um, yeah, so uh, just to to round up, um, the HTTP, uh, the OpenCPU API it doesn't describe any uh, any client specific logic. 
doesn't describe any R specific logic. It's an interoperable API. You can use it from every client yeah. in every language. It speaks HTTP and JSON. But you can also implement the server in, in other languages. There's nothing in there that's, that's R specific. Although, of course, the implementation that I wrote is, is written in R. Uh, but but the, the, the API describes concepts which are generic to, uh, to data analysis and functional languages, such as OpenX, Graphics, yeah, manuals, namespaces, and so forth. And you can just play with this on the server. Um, I'll skip over the, uh, the boring stuff. Yeah, so uh, if you want to get started, there's three ways to use open, there's three ways to use open CPU. You can start right now. One is to navigate to the free public demo servers. It's public.opencpu.org slash OCPU. Uh, it supports both HTTP and HTTPS. Uh, if you want to use it locally, install packages OpenCPU, and then if you load the um, uh, OpenCPU package, you automatically get instructions uh, how to uh, uh, with, with the address of the server, and then you can um, uh, install your own copy of, uh, of the cloud server, but that requires a dedicated uh, Ubuntu Linux 14.4 server. Um, if you have a package on web, uh, if you have a package on GitHub. Uh, it's very easy to deploy that on the public server. So just add this URL on, uh, to your uh, as a webhook to your uh, to your GitHub package. Um, this is also described on OCB website, by the way. But just add this uh, this webhook URL to your package webhook, uh, and then every time you push a commit to your master branch, the package gets automatically deployed on the server, and you can start calling your functions remotely, and you don't have to install or manage anything. All right, this is the, the final slide. So uh, yeah. there are all of the documentation is on the website, opencpu.org. There's example applications uh, that are all open source. They're all from the GitHub repository. Uh, and then there's a, a bunch of papers that I wrote that sort of go into the, uh, the more philosophical ID behind uh, OpenCPU. Thank you very much. Any questions? I would like to know where do you actually object to it? Because you said that you can change requests, for example, you load the data frame and you can use it afterwards. And what happens if the R session dies where this object is stored? So uh, that's my ask. Um, if you do one request and then uh, you want to use the output in a subsequent request, what happens if the R session dies? The R session always dies. Server kills your R process the second uh, your your um, um, your RPC is finished, and that's actually what makes us the, the system very stable and very reliable. It's because we don't depend on these R processes to stay alive. And what what if they die? And what what if they time out? Um, so if the, the system um, stores and serializes the return object of each function call and also all of the graphics and all the standard out, everything that was recreated as part of the function call is automatically stored on the server and uh, becomes available uh, at this URL using this key for subsequent requests. So your, your R process um, will not stay. That's the entirety. The only state that we have in the system is because these, these outputs from these function calls the, the return object, the graphics, the standard out, any files that were saved to the working directory, they are automatically stored by the system. Uh, do I understand correctly? You use two open CPU servers in the same machine? Oh, okay. So let's say you're going to load that. Make yeah. Request, All right. Get the key back. You now make the second request, but it happens to go to the other machine. So there, there's several approaches that I that I, that I have explored to um, to implement like fully uh, uh, distributed um, uh, computing. Um, honestly, so far we haven't used it that much because it's so easy these days to just spin up a huge machine and you don't have to do load balancing yourself. But there's uh, several uh, approaches I've, I've uh, explored and they all work. Um, 
First one is, um, so all of the stuff that gets stored on the server, it gets stored in a particular directory, and uh, we just use a, a, a file server, NSF server, that is shared between all of these, um, uh, all of these servers, which is basically you know, stateful backend of all of these servers. Uh, another one, uh, another approach, which is also available in OpenCPU, is that you have this key, but the key uh, actually, um, and the key is a shortcut to the URL, and the URL is the is 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 the is the unique uh, locator. So it includes the actual server. So you can instead of just passing the key, you can also pass the actual the full URL, and then you can pass it to a random other server, and that server will then automatically fetch the object from the server where it's coming from, and then uh, unserverize it and use it. Thank you very much. <laughs>